Welcome back in, everybody. It's halftime. Mark Childress here with Daja Davidson. 21 to 10 is your score. Clemson on top of Miami. It was a celebratory mood for us here on set, Daja, before that last play, the blocked field goal, a costly yeah. mistake by the Tigers to kind of let Miami back in it a little bit at the end of the first half. Yeah, you know, I think that changes the entire trajectory of what this game looks like coming back after the half. I think prior to that, botched field goal attempt. I think that Clemson went into the, you know, would have gone into the locker room feeling really confident coming back out and being able to roll on. This makes it a really, you know, one possession game here uh, with, with coming back from halftime and Miami has the ball. Yep. This looks totally different now coming back from the half. It really does. Uh, Clemson got the scoring underway. It was a 24-yard pass from Trevor Lawrence to Braden Galloway. That put him up 7-0 to zero at the end of the first quarter. Travis Etienne doing what Travis Etienne does. He was tackled in the backfield and somehow squirted out and ran it into the end zone to make it 14-0. After a Miami field goal, a really great drive to end the first half for the Tigers. They run it all the way down there. Galloway with another touchdown. It was 21-3, Daja. Clemson got the ball back, tried to make something happen, and the block field goal is how the scoring ended up to make it 21 to 10 at the half. Yeah, no question that uh, I think if you saw Coach Sweeney there at the end yes. being interviewed on crossed. ESPN, you saw those arms crossed, you saw those lips kind of perched together. <laughs> it will not be a uh, pleasant conversation in the locker room for sure, but you know, all they have to do is come back out, make adjustments. I talked yep. about this before the game started. I said when things happen that don't go the right way, aren't in favor, how will you adjust? And so I I think this team coming back out from the half, Rick recognizing that Miami will have the ball, have the chance to score again potentially. What are you going to do? What adjustments are you going to make to retake control of this football game? That was a really dominant performance by the Tigers in the first half. They had bottled up Miami entirely before Derek King. I think it was a 54-yard run he had kind of on a busted play on a big third down. That was really more yards that Miami uh, had had at that point in the entire first half. So a dominant performance by the Tigers, 11-point lead. Yeah, it was incredibly exciting. And we're going to bring to you right now the top three plays from the first half from our very own Don Munson. On that left hash, Lawrence going shotgun, two wide outs to his right, one left. Lawrence going to look back, throw, have it complete to Galloway. Galloway crosses the 20, the 15, flag down at the 10, the 5, into the end zone, touchdown. Comes left. King takes a shotgun snap, here comes pressure, and they're going to get him in second. <laughs> back behind the 50. And wide outs either side. Now they take ETN and move him left side, and handoff will go. ETN, he'll bounce off the pile, take it right side, headed for the end zone, gets there, touchdown. So Dodger, that throwback play to Braden Galloway for the first touchdown. Uh, they ran that exact play against Miami down there in 2015. I saw Eric McLean on uh, on Twitter talking about that. So it's a play they don't pull out very often, but it worked magically in the first quarter. Absolutely, and we talked about how the Tigers needed to get out early. Luckily, they did, considering how the first half just ended. But you know, they were rolling. I feel like we looked really strong the, on the offensive and de defensive side of the ball. We we're you know putting a stop to that Miami offense and and making Derek King have to work. And so, you know, I think coming back, we've got to keep the momentum on this side of the football field and make sure that we retake control um, and get that same momentum back flowing that we had in the early part of the first half. If Tim Bure were sitting here with us, he'd talk about how fantastic the Tigers usually are in the last four minutes before the half and the four minutes after the half. So it's kind of rare for the Tigers to lose that battle. They did get that TD with under four minutes left in the first half, but they gave one up uh, as well. All right, autograph football win. We give away a Nike football in pregame every time you hashtag Death Valley Live on Twitter and on social media. Congratulations at Tiger 79 at Tiger 79 Good job. A Clemson Athletic Marketing representative is going to be in touch with you soon. Let's head back into the stadium now. Looks like the band is performing at halftime. Let's check in on them. I caught them right in between songs, of course here in just a second. Tigers on top, 21 to 10 at the half. Of course, number one, Clemson taking on number seven, Miami. A really good first half of football for the Tigers so far. That big mistake there at the end of the half, making this a little bit closer game. So uh, second half of this ball game should be quite interesting. We'll throw it back in there to the band.
always great to hear Tiger Rag. And since you picked on me for being old in the pregame, a little panic in the disco <laughs> before that. Panic in the disco. Come on. Sure, I'm Mark. somewhat <laughs> relevant. I'll just pass it over to you. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Fans, <laughs> it is now time to take a look back at our hero of the game presented in the fourth quarter first quarter. In light of COVID-19, our hero was unable to attend the game, but instead was streamed in live into Death Valley. Fans, it was a warm welcome we had for senior airman Zachary Kozart all the way from Germany. He is a longtime Clemson fan, originally from North Carolina, and is currently stationed in Germany as a passenger service supervisor. He is a part of the 721st Aerial uh, Sport, excuse me, Squadron and Air Mobility Command. He has been awarded two Airmen of the Month of Honors and has received the Air Force Achievement Medal. As of November 1st, 2020, he will be ranked, uh, promoted to the rank of Staff Sergeant, streaming in all the way from Ramstein Air Base in Germany. It was Senior Airman Zachary Kozart. That's awesome stuff, man. We do a great job of honoring our military here uh, every Saturday in Death Valley. Really cool to see stuff like that. Absolutely. So you want to check on some scores here? Uh, there's yeah. been some interesting scores so far in the uh, in the ACC today. Of course, last night it was 46-27. Uh, Georgia Tech over Louisville in that game. NC State beating Virginia 38-21 earlier. North Carolina 56-45 over Virginia Tech. Duke beating Syracuse 38-24. Boston College in overtime 31-30 over Pitt. A very nice win for them. Notre Dame up 35 to 20 over Florida State. Florida State held the lead for a good portion of the first quarter and part of the second quarter. So we were kind of picking on them in the pregame. I know, I know. But that Notre Dame team and that Notre Dame offense is really, really good. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting um, how this game here plays out as we get ready to come back uh, for the second half of this football game. You can see the fans are putting their ponchos yeah. on. People are starting to cover up. So I think the long-awaited rain that we were talking about all before the start of the game has officially arrived. Oh, joy, right? Uh, I got a text uh, right when we walked in here before the halftime show that the rain had started. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, hopefully any significant weather. I know there were some tornado warnings in the extended area. Hopefully everything will be all right on that front. And it's going to make the second half uh, a little bit strange. I mean, we've been worried all week about the weather. It had zero impact at no. all in the first half other right. than it was very, uh, very nice to be there at the ball game. So that's about to change. Yeah, you know, a little humid. The rain is just now starting to fall. So, you know, you're right. We talked so much about um, you know if or how that will impact the uh, the football game but you know it doesn't seem to have done that at all look at this dominating performance in the first half the score doesn't really tell the tale right because of that late field goal block and return for a touchdown 302 total yards to 79 we talked all week about the vaunted Miami attack 79 yards 54 of those I believe were on that one Derek King run they were really bottled up 21 first downs to three first downs is the big one there as well but again the special teams mistake right before halftime makes this an 11 point game instead of an 18 point game yeah you know and you talked about winning the turnover battle well no turnovers which is great and we want to continue that into the second half you know rushing yards we've got 58 to 42 but again we're talking about you know a big run by Derek King there and, um, you know, coming back from this half, I think there'll have to be a lot of focus on just regaining composure, really. Yes. I think we played great football in this first half. Um, it's, you know, coming back and making sure you don't lose sight of what was accomplished because the score doesn't quite reflect, um, you know, what has been accomplished in the first half stats as you see there on your screen. There's been a lot of talk and comparison about this game and the last time two top ten teams played in Death Valley, which was the Louisville game back in 2016. Clemson got out to a big lead in that game and Louisville came storm Coming back. Dodge, in the second half of this one, I just don't think that's going to be the case. Miami has not been able to do anything on offense so far. Brent Venables is going to continue to make adjustments, and I like the Tigers' chances in the second half. Plus, Miami really hasn't been able to stop the Clemson offense hardly at all. I mean, 302 yards in the first half, and I feel like they've got a lot more left in them in the second half. Yeah, you know, Miami is not performing well tonight at all against so this far. Clemson football team, and, and I don't think we have to be worried coming back after the half. The score made it a lot closer, and so you're like, okay, 
and let's straighten up and get things tight. But, you know, this team played a great first half of football. And again, I think just coming back out, it's continuing to do what we, you know, were in the first half of this football game. Minimize mistakes is yes. pretty much it because all Miami has done so far tonight is capitalize on the mistakes of this football team, which have been very minimal. Yes. They've made a big deal in, you know, this late score at the end of the first half. But really, it's just about minimizing those mistakes and continuing on to win this football game. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see a couple of other mistakes by Miami. Of course, the targeting penalty where they lost one of their safeties, had a couple of other key moments that uh, caused them some problems as well. Yeah, well, thank you all for tuning in with us. Again, I'm Daja Dial, Mark Childress with Death Valley Live. Make sure to tune in to the ACC Network and the Clemson Tigers Network for the second half. We'll see you back here October 4th, Clemson versus Syracuse.